Coming up on First and Four, state lawmakers discuss a bill to ban a popular social media app from government phones. Plus, Ukraine's president visits the United Kingdom to build support for his country. And showers, at least the chance of them, continue as we head through tonight. And some could do, see a little bit of heavy rain at times. The breakdown on the way is First and Four continues. Mountain News, First at Four, continues. A Senate committee is talking about banning TikTok. The ban would apply to all state-issued devices. Security experts say the social media app could expose user data to the Chinese government. Kelsey Soto has the story. This device just is not uh, secure enough to be on people's computers and iPads. Known for its viral dancing videos and mashups, Kentucky state leaders say they're concerned about the Chinese-owned app TikTok and are making moves to remove it from all state-owned devices. Republican Senator Robbie Mills is a sponsor of Senate Bill 20 and spoke to committee members Wednesday morning about the measure. Important information that state government has like, you know, social security numbers and things like that of people, unemployment information that we can protect that information as best we can. Wording of the bill indicated that the social media platform could also be banned on state owned networks like college campuses, which could have an impact on students who use the app on their private devices. Senator Mills says that won't be the case. The state has already prohibited TikTok for those employed by the executive branch. Uh, we did uh, make a slight change. We have a committee substitute uh, today that we'll need to accept, and that was after some feedback from uh, the general Assem uh, from the uh, executive branch. The measure passed unanimously, nine to zero. Senator Mills says Senate Bill 20 boils down to safety and security of private data and preventing the possibility of it getting into the wrong hands, like foreign adversary, the Chinese government. That was Kelsey Soto reporting. The bill will head to a full vote on the Senate floor sometime in the near future. A similar bill has also been introduced in the House. And we have an update on another bill that we told you about at the top of the four o'clock. Uh, newscast the bill to further lower Kentucky's income tax has now been sent to Governor Bashir's desk for his signature. The full Senate did call it up this afternoon. The bill passed along party lines in a 30 to 5 vote. Now Governor Bashir is expected to veto that legislation, but Republicans have enough members to override that veto in both chambers. But we'll have an update on the uh, income tax bill coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. One Eastern Kentucky Sheriff's Office is seeing a theft trend that is continuing to grow in popularity. In the last few months, the Martin County Sheriff's Office has made numerous copper theft arrests with suspects cutting down cable and phone lines to extract the copper and sell it to scrap yards. Those with the Sheriff's Office say they are working to crack down on this trend but are struggling to do so with limited staff. We can only be in one place at one time, so we have to have the, the public to be involved. As soon as they realize uh, if they're on their internet at night and they lose it, uh, call 911 immediately uh, if, if they have cell service to let us know, you know. We can't be there all the time, everywhere. Martin County Sheriff John Kirk adds that at this point, many of the local scrapyards should know if they are buying stolen copper. If they are still willingly buying that material, Sheriff Kirk says they will face consequences as well. The Pikeville Fire Department unveiled its latest investment this week, a custom-built truck to meet the city's needs. The state-of-the-art truck has a more than $1.2 million price tag with fire and rescue specifications that make it possible to reach more than 100 feet with the ladder and bucket and a rescue basket attachment, making it ideal for environments like the city's high-rise buildings and more. Very good features for us, features that we've never seen before. Um, some of these were spec'd out for our department, but others were kind of things that they brought to us and said, hey, would you like to have this? Fleming says the department is excited to have a new addition to its fleet, which goes hand in hand with many of the recent training updates at the station. We'll have more on those coming up tonight at 6. People in Madison County are making use of a new Narcan vending machine. Voices of Hope helped set up the machine inside the Madison County Detention Center. The group says since the machine was installed back in December, 
67 units of Narcan have been taken out. People are leaving jail, they're at a you know, much higher risk of overdose because they've been in there maybe like a week or a few days, their tolerance starts to dip down. There's people who leave jail and overdose and die all the time, so they're some of the most important people to have that. Berkshire says that they hope to place more vending machines like the one in Madison County across Kentucky going forward. Continuing to watch shower potential in parts of the mountains today. Most of us have stayed dry in many spots, but already seeing at least a little bit of drizzle working into parts of the region. Here's the view from Pine Mountain along US 119 there in Letcher County. Yes, we're starting to see a little bit of drizzle on the camera lens there, and that's only going to increase as we head through the next couple of days, or at least as we head later on into tonight. There's the view from downtown Hazard. We're dry and warm. Temperatures in the upper 50s to near 60. You see those temperatures uh, hanging in the upper 50s in most spots, but even a few middle 60s already in parts of the Cumberland Valley. We'll continue to see a little bit of that uh, showery weather in parts of the higher elevations, but the main rain activity still off to our west, and the trajectory is kind of taking it, kind of moving up into the region. So it's something we'll watch as we head through tonight going zone by zone. It's going to be another mild night. We should be about 47 for daytime highs this time of year. will be almost 10 degrees. In some cases, will be 10 degrees better than that in parts of the Cumberland Valley for lows tonight. Many of us in the 50s in the Kentucky River Valley and same thing as we head into the big Sandy right around 50 in many spots. Details on when those shower chances move out and when those winds really start to crank in a few minutes. Steve. Evan, thanks. The death toll continues to grow from that historic earthquake that rocked Syria and Turkey. More than 11,000 people have died from the 7.8 magnitude quake. Tens of thousands have also been injured by the natural disaster. It's one of the strongest quakes to hit that region in more than 100 years. Earlier today, Pope Francis asked everyone in attendance at the Italian Roman Catholic Church to join him in prayer. Il mio pensiero va in questo momento alle popolazioni della Turchia e della Siria. Preghiamo insieme perché questi nostri fratelli e sorelle possano andare avanti davanti a questa tragedia e chiediamo alla Madonna li protegga. Francis in a telegram offering his heartfelt condolences as the Italian Roman Catholic Church has allocated more than half a million dollars for emergency aid. We'll have more about this coming up at 5.30. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has made his first trip to Britain since Russia invaded his country. He's there asking for more weapons to fight Russia's army. CBS's Ian Lee reports from London. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky landed in London wearing his trademark fatigues on a mission to bolster support for his country's war with Russia. We want to stand by you throughout this conflict and ensure that you're victorious. Thank you so much. Hundreds of lawmakers welcomed him to a packed Westminster Hall for a historic address. Slava Ukraina. Mr. President, please. President Zelensky made an impassioned plea to Parliament, urging Britain's government to give Ukraine the weapons and money they need to win the war. We know freedom will win. We know Russia will lose. He urged allies to send his country fighter jets, bringing a Ukrainian pilot's helmet to drive the point home. The writing on the helmet reads, we have freedom, give us wings to protect it. This is President Zelensky's second trip overseas since the war began. It comes less than two months after he visited the United States to drum up aid. Back in December, the U.S. gave billions more in funding to Ukraine and promised to send them a Patriot missile battery to repel Russian missiles and aircraft. While in London, President Zelensky also met with King Charles, calling it a truly special moment. He thanked the British monarch for showing support for Ukraine when he was still the Prince of Wales. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. Zelensky is heading to Paris next as he keeps pushing allies for more aid ahead of a Russian military push that's expected soon.
Coming up on First at Four, today's vehicles are loaded with technology, including digital odometers. And now crooks have figured out how to manipulate those odometers with a simple device. Plus, rain showers, not the only type of showers we have in the forecast for the next seven days. Those details ahead. WYMT News app offers alerts on breaking stories as they happen.